Our next speaker is Dr. Ying Xiao. Dr. Xiao is currently a professor in the Department of Radiation Oncology and Jefferson Medical College, where she joined the faculty in 1999 and served as the clinical director for medical physics division for five years. Dr. Xiao has been the designated physicist for ACR and directed the construction of RTOG QA lab. Dr. Xiao has led and participated in multiple APM committees, subcommittees, working groups, task groups, producing guideline documents that widely adopt. And uh, uh, actually, Dr. Xiao has so many experience with uh, clinical trials, and then on Tuesday morning, she's giving another talk in the clinical trial session. And so we are trying to slave her with two talks at this session. We, with respect for today's session, Dr. Xiao is the co-author of the AAPM white paper on VMAT quality assurance. Good morning. Just uh, wanted to report on the status of that white paper. Uh, it was passed through TPC and we tried to submit to medical physics, and uh, we have substantial comments back with um, adjectives such as verbose and ambiguous um, and disappointing. So now, obviously, we need to do a lot more work on that paper in order to get it published. So uh, today, um, I'll just uh, grab the theme of that paper and talk about acceptance testing, commissioning, uh, quality assurance of VMAT, just to uh, expand from Dr. Ying's excellent presentation uh, with some of the VMAT flavor. So uh, some disclosure of conflict of interest. I have funding from uh, NIH, uh, PA Department of Health, and uh, American College of Radiology. And the objective of today's presentation is to uh, disseminate some knowledge of acceptance testing and commissioning for VMAT, and uh, touch upon some methodology uh, for the quality assurance. And uh, it will be categorized into these four major uh, topics. The fundamentals of VMAT, um, then acceptance testing, commissioning, and uh, routine quality assurance, and some of the challenge points. So fundamentals of VMAT, uh, I have uh, to acknowledge the, uh, some of the slides that I obtained from uh, Dr. Cedric Yu, and um, who actually proposed VMAT uh, initially. Now, we all know uh, that the fundamental difference between IMRT and 3D uh, CRT is that we actually um, modulate each uh, of the beam so that we have more conformal dose distribution to the target and sparing normal critical structures. And um, so it makes it possible for us to shape the isodose more towards the target um, and giving less dose to the critical structure. And so the principles of IMRT is that we actually use more degrees of freedom so that we can achieve more optimum dose distribution. So the quality of the plan is actually determined uh, upon the total number of strata. Uh, basically, is a multiplication of the number of beams and a number of intensity levels within each beam. So what actually matters is the total number of shape changes. And uh, 
then there's no fundamental uh, difference between static IMRT and rotational IMRT as long as we actually achieved same uh, degrees of freedom. And um, so now uh, volumetric modulated arc therapy is actually just one form of IMRT, although uh, with the rotational flavor. And it's usually can be delivered using a conventional linear accelerator using conventional MLC. And the characteristics of which is that during the dose delivery, we have a lot of changing parameters, such as the dose rate, the speed of the gantry, and as well as the speed of MLC leaves. And we have quite a number of examples from different vendors, uh, such as RapidArc or SmartArc. Um, now, this slide uh, is from Cedric. He um, actually claims that uh, one can convert multiple arcs to a single arc uh, with the same degree of freedom. And so uh, I just wanted to know uh, how many of you have implemented uh, VMAT in your clinic? Wow, a lot. So uh, then uh, how many of you are using more than two arcs? Fewer numbers. So we can see from our clinical experience that uh, for majority of the clinical cases, um, less than uh, two arcs is actually um, adequate for most of the clinical cases. And, and from also our clinical observation, the uh, plant quality from static IMRT or VMAT are, five, are quite comparable. And this is one of the uh, prostate cases, and this is one of the head neck cases. Although we gain uh, from multiple arcs, um, for a simple case such as prostate, uh, you do not actually perceive the difference. And why does VMAT work? Um, as we discussed before, that the quality is actually determined by the number of shape changes. And our clinical equipment uh, has its limitations. So the gantry can only move with such uh, variational speed, and dose rate can only change uh, with a certain speed and um, also, MLC can only travel with a certain speed limit. And from uh, our survey before, that actually most of our clinical cases are not that complex, that it warrants so many degrees of freedom. Therefore, um, VMAT can be efficient in a lot of the clinical cases. And so uh, we ask ourselves these uh, questions. Um, is, can we increase the delivery efficiency with VMAT? Can they be delivered faster? And do they actually produce better plans? And do they actually use model unit? Um, uh, fundamentally, actually, is... Uh, we have to contend that uh, the implementation of the static IMRT de delivery has not been actually optimized to its uh, limit. So uh, therefore, it's actually um, not fair to compare the delivery efficiency. Although uh, one has to say that in the current implementation, the VMAT delivery is actually a lot faster than the static IMRT. Now, um, do we actually see much better uh, plant quality from VMAT? 
Um, as we discussed before, the plant quality is actually governed by the number of shape changes. So if VMAT has the same number of shape changes as compared with IMRT, one uh, has a hard time arguing that the plant quality um, can be that much better. And another argument uh, is that it's really practically hard to compare clinical plants. You have to set up appropriate criteria, and uh, really you have to have a controlled study, which is pretty hard to do. And so we have um, listed the uh, publications if you wanted to look more in detail as to how to perform plan comparison. And so, uh, and we uh, all know that when we have complex VMAT plans or complex MRT plans, the delivery time is much longer. So uh, it, it's the same uh, argument here that it's really hard to compare the delivery efficiency between static MRT and VMAT. It really depends on the complexity of the plan. And also, uh, there is this field size limitation problem on some of the uh, vendor's equipment that you pretty much have to split a large field into uh, multiple small fields, in which case you decrease the efficiency of the delivery. And obviously, there are, uh, there are methods for us to resolve this problem by rotating the gantry to a certain degree so that uh, your field size limit uh, is not that crucial. Now, um, so do we actually use fewer monitor units for VMAT? And this also uh, comes back to the same argument, uh, that uh, the monitor unit is actually related to the plant complexity. So, uh, when you have similar plan complexity, um, it's hard to argue that uh, one method really uses a higher monitor unit than the other method. Now, those uh, we listed the current uh, VMAT options, and uh, we can plan the VMAT from uh, Eclipse uh, standard, um, from Monaco. Uh, from Electa or Smart Arc from Pinnacle and Prowess, and some of the uh, delivery solutions are um, Rapid Arc and VMAT from uh, Varian and Electa, and uh, some of the QA systems we have still the conventional film and a 2D um, ion chamber array, diode array from different binders, and 3D diode matrix. Um, and f different solutions from different vendors. And um, uh, we're also, uh, some of the researchers are working on 3D uh, gel dosimetry and 4D dosimetry as well. So uh, now Dr. Ying has given a very uh, excellent talk on the QA. What are the special considerations that uh, we should have for VMAT? So, uh, the major difference is that we have so many changing uh, variables, such as the gantries, gantry uh, movement and dose rate change, uh, MLC movement. And so this uh, all needs to be tested either individually or combined together uh, in the acceptance testing as well as in the uh, commissioning and routine QA of VMAT. So the first question, uh, for VMAT, the plant quality DVHs uh, of, for the plant depends on A, number of beams, B, number of intensity levels for each beam, C, number of arcs, uh, D, number of intensity levels for each beam, and E, exact locations of the apertures. Seven, six, five, four, 
one. Okay. Hmm. All right. So now the answer is uh, C. And we have uh, explained it um, that more than two arcs sometimes are necessary to achieve a high quality uh, plan. Now, another question. Uh, for VMAT, the intensity modulation is achieved by all of the following except A, motion of MLC leaves, B, variation of dose rate, C, variation of gantry rotation speed, D, overlapping shape, E, moving column, column meter. Seven, six, five, four, three, two, one. Um, all right. So the answer is D. Um, so uh, the conformal uh, dose painting of VMAT is actually achieved by varying different uh, parameters, as we discussed before, uh, gantry rotation speed, dose rate, uh, motion speed of column meter and MLC. And uh, one of the things that we don't have with VMAT is actually the overlapping shape, because for each beam angle, we have only one shape for VMAT. That's the uh, fundamental difference between uh, VMAT and static IMRT. So I hope the SAM is not governed by the, uh, the final score. Um, okay. Um, now acceptance testing and commissioning. So. Acceptance testing usually just uh, include the steps uh, following the booklet that's given to us from the vendor. Um, and so one thing that I wanted to uh, stress is that we don't necessarily have to follow those booklets from the vendors. And if we are concerned with a certain uh, item, we can actually uh, negotiate with the uh, vendor so that uh, we are satisfied with the performance. And uh, just a few uh, big items for the uh, acceptance testing. They should check the machine readiness to, verif to verify the installation uh, appropriate and inspect the safety and quality of components. Um, and for VMAT, we need to perform specific testing, um, which should actually include end-to-end -end testing for the VMAT. So uh, for acceptance testing, how many of you are performing end-to-end -end test? Very good. Thank you. Um, now, so uh, it seems like uh, we all have pretty extensive experience for VMAT. I probably will not go in that much detail in terms of the different uh, tests that we need to do. Um, so, and um, I'll just mention a number of big items. Uh, first of all, um, we need to commission the equipment. So uh, Dr. Fang Fang has, Fang Fang Ying has uh, uh, described the importance of that, and I will not go into much detail on that. And so um, the different tools and devices that we use for VBAT measurement, um, including uh, phantoms, as uh, Dr. Ying mentioned before, uh, port films, uh, and or log files for some of the vendors that you can access. 
and software and testing protocols. Uh, you need to specify parameters, methods, tolerance, uh, documentation, and establish your uh, baselines. And commissioning is uh, supposed to be more extensive than acceptance. So what one needs to do uh, will be, uh, number one, mechanical tests, and number two, dosimetry tests, uh, and number three, interruption or resump resumption test, and four, end-to-end -end tests, which should include um, data transfer and patient-specific tests. And so, as we mentioned before, uh, the special features of VMAT is all those changing factors, uh, gantry, MLC, dose rate. So they need to be tested individually uh, as well as uh, with combinations. So you have those uh, three changing factors. Um, if they are tested individually, that's uh, three or more tests. And then you need to combine any of the two changes together. Um, so that's two times three, at least six tests. And then you have to combine all the three variations together. That's at least one test. So now we're just going to um, present some of the uh, references that's in, that's in the literature. Uh, one um, very important one is uh, from a uh, memorial by uh, Cliff Link's uh, group on commissioning and quality assurance for uh, variant VMAT, and uh, from Bedford and uh, Warrington, uh, they concentrated on ELECTA. And the general IMRT guidance uh, document from Gary Izzell and all. Uh, so those are... Uh, pretty uh, useful documentations that one needs to refer to for this, the details of these tests. So uh, those individual mechanical tests uh, and dosimetry tests, uh, Dr. Fang Fangying has um, described a great deal. Um, so these are uh, pretty much the same slides that Dr. Uh, in used, I'll just pass them over. This is uh, the mechanical test for the MLCs and different combination of uh, variation of gantry, MLCs, uh, and peak advance test to identify the errors uh, in the MLC. And then the dosimetry test. So we need to test uh, the flatness and symmetry for uh, dose rates. And uh, dosimetry test also with a combination of the different variations of um, MLC with uh, a different gantry angle. And... Um, with different gantry speed and dose rate. Um, and uh, so this, uh, also Dr. Ng touched upon that. Um, and then we are adding uh, the MLC leaf speed uh, to the gantry as well as the dose rate variation. Um, and we need to check the consistency of the dosimetry with all these variations combined together. So those uh, were from uh, Cliff Ling's paper on the variant-specific um, equipment. And in Bedford's paper, uh, he used um, Electus machine. So uh, the dosimetry test that he used... Uh, are so that uh, for this one uh, they use a static 16 by 1 uh, field with the uh, rotating gantry, and then uh, for this test he moved the isocenter to off axis. So uh, in order to cover the same target, he needs to um, vary the MLC shape 
uh, with the gantry rotation. So this is another variation of the combination of different uh, variation tests for the MLC and gantry angle with dosimetry. And uh, also another one that an aperture uh, with a um, aperture moving at uniform speed and or an aperture moving at variable speed. So similar test from the Bedford paper that for the detail of which you can refer to the um, uh, publication. And so uh, interruption and uh, resumption test, uh, we recommend that uh, if you interrupt the beam and then resume, uh, your uh, result should uh, be identical to if there were no interruption. So uh, if we use 2%, 2 percent, two millimeter uh, distance to agreement, we should see more than 98 percent of pass rate. And uh, so end-to-end -end test, uh, this is very uh, important because it tests from uh, simulation to delivery. And we actually uh, have um, a number of benchmark cases that's downloadable from the APM website uh, from uh, TG119, uh, in which case you can perform the test and compare with the performance from the other institutions that's reported in this uh, TG119 report. And uh, then we need to perform patient-specific QA. So I just list these numbers, uh, 4%, 4 millimeter and 95% pass rate uh, is not uh, really supposed to be taken um, as its face value, what I wanted to say is that you need to collect the data from your own institution, uh, perform statistical analysis, and establish your own criteria. So if uh, in your institution, if you use 2%, 2 millimeter, and 95% pass rate, you can actually pass a majority of your cases. That's actually the criteria that you should be using. So um, now, just an uh, example of a, um, a VMAT commissioning with the benchmark case using TG119 from uh, the publication from uh, Mancuso's group. So uh, they did the plan according to the criteria established in TG119 for the uh, different scenarios. And you see that the plan goal is listed uh, in this column. And um, uh, what uh, has been achieved with TG119 is listed in this one. And uh, they tested it with the static IMRT as well as with VMAT. And you see that the performance um, between IMRT and VMAT are quite comparable and well within the distribution of the TG119. So if you have, uh, in your commissioning effort, achieved similar performance of your plan, um, you are in good shape. And uh, they also listed the point um, measurement as compared with calculation. And you see that uh, most of the agreement are within 3%. You might be able to achieve better. Um, and they also listed the film measurement as well. So we just saw the measurement results. Uh, let's see. Uh, for iron tumor measurement, the reasonable confidence limit that should be adopted for VMAT QA should be 1%, 3%, 5 percent, 4 percent, 7 percent. Everybody was fast. You can reset it? But you saw the result already. 
<laughs> okay. So you, you're saying that the, uh, um, it, it, it actually depends on whether you got it correct or not? No, no. Oh, good. They, they need to record, they, they, they respond. Oh, okay, okay, all right. But it doesn't matter whether the answer is correct or not. Right? Good. Okay. Okay, so it seems like we have a technical uh, difficulty here with, with the question. Huh? The timer is missing. So Just go back and wait until everybody gets the response. It's already 35 people respond. Let's wait until everybody gets it. Okay, everybody respond. It, should I... Uh, Wait, wait, yeah, okay. All right. Number. Okay. One, nobody else. Let's go to the next. Good. <laughs> good. Oops. Oops. Okay. All right. Much better. All right. Okay. So all of us um, uh, got it right. Okay. Um, now, um, so in the interest of time, we need to actually uh, wrap up with this presentation for um, the uh, routine quality assurance. Uh, and it should um, follow the same uh, recommendation that uh, Dr. Ying presented. Uh, and it just needs to uh, check the consistency. And uh, uh, it should include patient-specific QA and uh, machine-specific QA. And they should include the same variables that we discussed before. So now uh, for daily QA, um, we recommend that uh, perform a rotational delivery, but it's optional. And according to Dr. Uh, Ying, we really have to evaluate, um, according to TG100, what is needed and what is not. Um, monthly, uh, we need to uh, look at end-to-end -end test for patient-specific QA, which we do anyway. Uh, however, for uh, annual QA, we need to follow TG142, uh, according to Dr. Ying, and... Um, adding the VMAT specifics uh, that we perform during the commissioning, the test that we um, presented before. So uh, it's very important that for us to uh, establish the baseline during commissioning so that uh, for our routine QAs, we have something to compare with. Uh, so everybody um, is very familiar with this scenario for patient-specific QA. Uh, that we generally use phantom uh, with the uh, uh, VMAT delivery and with um, ion chamber 2D, 3D uh, detectors. Um, so I uh, just wanted to uh, mention that uh, by doing the patient specific QA, uh, we um, need to include collision check. And some of the uh, compiled results from uh, Duke that uh, for VMAT QA, the ion chamber measurement uh, with a pretty good distribution hovering around uh, 0 to 1 percent. And for uh, the array measurement um, with 3 percent 4 millimeter DTA uh, AC um, mostly is above 96 percent, and uh, film has a similar performance. And some of the uh, uh, example from other vendors, from a uh, so we have this VMAT plant with Ancentra, uh, uh, which uh, is probably not going to be around for a while, and delivered on a Electra Synergy S. And uh, uh, so this is also um, 
delivered uh, Electa uh, Synergy S uh, with the TG119 results uh, using Delta IV. And so uh, one item that I uh, wanted to discuss is that um, how, how do we evaluate the efficacy and uh, efficiency of our um, patient routine QA? So uh, now from this uh, publication from uh, Duke, they uh, group the um, QA into three stages. And stage one is very intensive. Uh, they use ion chamber, film in three planes, uh, ion chamber array in two planes, and 3D gel dosimetry. And then um, in stage two uh, is rigorous, but not as extensive. Uh, they include ion chamber array uh, in two planes. And then stage three is, has been reduced to uh, ion chamber uh, or ion chamber array in one plane or array only. And they compare uh, the time that is required to perform stage A QA uh, which takes more than uh, three, four hours, and stage two QA, uh, somewhat reduced, and stage three QA, uh, it takes about an hour. So the um, uh, concept is that uh, one at the beginning of implementation of this technique, one needs to do extensive QA for a number of cases. And once you are satisfied, then you uh, change it to stage two QA and then uh, stage three. So some of the challenges for uh, BMAT. Um, um, so, now, because of the uh, continuous changing of the different parameters, uh, we need to perform real-time uh, monitoring. And uh, when do we choose to use this technology uh, for which patient case this is more appropriate? Um, and the motion, so how does uh, patient motion impact upon the quality of the VMAT? So the good news is that uh, the study has found that VMAT is actually less susceptible to the uncertainty than the static IMRT. Uh, but however, we need to, that's something that we need to uh, bear in mind as well. So uh, in conclusion, that VMAT is just one form of IMRT is not that different. And uh, we need uh, to be more careful about planning, testing, and verifications because it has its own uh, characteristics. And uh, uh, so we need to carry out our QA in different stages. Um, and the VMAT needs to be uh, evaluated by its accuracy, safety, efficiency, applicability, integration, and adaptation. Thank you.